you probably have heard of ProRes 422, ProRes RAW, but you may not really know what is the difference between them and more importantly, why you should shoot with one of these formats instead of the typical MP4 file. While obviously ProRes RAW with the name RAW in it should give you the best image quality, but it is not necessarily the best choice for most people. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you what is the actual difference between these different video file formats, how would it impact your workflow, and I will also help you to choose the video file format that is most suitable to you. Kia ora, good morning everyone, which one here? Welcome back to the channel. Panasonic has just released the 2.0 firmware for the Panasonic Lumix GH6. With this new firmware, it gives you the option to record ProRes RAW using external recorder and they have also added some new ProRes 422 and ProRes 422 HQ internal recording options in addition to the existing internal ProRes 422 options as well as the common H.264 and H.265 video files. So when I was trying out this new firmware, I thought it would be a good time to talk about all these different file formats, the pros and cons for each one of them and which one should you really choose. We are going to look at three different video file formats. The first one is the H.265 video file. This is also called the High Efficiency Video Codec HEVC. This codec is the successor to the H.264. The H.265 is widely supported by all the latest software and hardware as it delivers very good image quality but the file size is much smaller than the H.264. The second format is the ProRes 422 and particularly the standard ProRes 422 and the ProRes 422 HQ variant which are the most commonly used ProRes 422 codec when recording high quality video. The last format is the ProRes RAW, including its variant ProRes RAW HQ. As the name suggested, this is the RAW video file format. Just a few years ago, this file format is not available on most consumer level cameras, but more and more cameras are starting to support it these days. Now, there are many other video formats or codec out there. For example, there's B-RAW, ProRes 4444, ProRes 422 LT, but today I'm going to only focus on these three formats I mentioned at the beginning because they are the most popular video formats these days and also they are all supported by the GH6 as all the test footage that I'm going to show you in this video were recorded using the GH6 with the firmware 2.0. But even though I'm using GH6, what I'm going to talk about should be mostly the same even if you are using other cameras as these file formats are the industry standard formats. Before we start, we need to understand a little bit more about the ProRes RAW format. How is it different to the other video formats? Most of the cameras we use these days has a Bayer sensor and the output image, no matter it's photo or video, is obtained after the debayering process, which turn the raw data from the sensor into RGB image that our computers or monitors can display. Most of the video format record the video after it has gone through the debayering process. So each pixel has a red, green, and blue subpixel in it. But ProRes RAW records the original data from the sensor before the debayering process. Because of that, the ProRes RAW file stores the most original, the most raw data from the camera sensor. And it means we would keep the most amount of data in the video file and you have the most flexibility when you are processing your video. But on the other hand, there are some disadvantage, actually a lot of disadvantage that comes with the ProRes RAW file as well. But anyway, now you have some basic idea about what ProRes RAW video is. Let's look at what it actually means if you shoot in the ProRes RAW file format. The most obvious difference between these different video file format is the file size. 
While a high quality 4K or even higher resolution video file is never small, a typical video file using the H.265 codec is still much smaller in comparison to the ProRes 422 and ProRes RAW file. This is because the H.265 codec was developed primarily to compress the file as much as possible so the files are suitable for content delivery. Because of that, these files require a lot more processing power to decode. While the ProRes 422 and ProRes RAW files have a much bigger focus on the editing performance, so they are not compressed quite as much. An hour of 5.7K 25 frames per second video recorded in the H.265 10-bit 420 long geop format from the GH6 is approximately 90 gigabyte. In comparison, an hour of ProRes 422HQ video at the same resolution and frame rate is about 720 gigabyte. So that's about eight times bigger in size. An hour of ProRes RAW HQ video is 930 gigabytes. So that's about 10 times bigger than the H.265 file. And remember, it's not just the memory card or SSD drive that you use for recording need to be larger. Your computer's storage and backup also need to be larger as well. And that gets to the next thing I want to talk about. And that is how do you record your video file? For the H.265 video files, because usually the data rate is not that high, so with most cameras, a high-speed SD card or at most CF Express card is fast enough. And that means with a camera like the GH6, you could also record a backup copy to your second card slot simultaneously. That is unless you choose one of the highest bitrate format that is too fast for the SD card to handle. With the ProRes 422 format, with most cameras these days, you will need to record it to an external recorder, but some camera like the GH6 would allow you to record it in camera. You would just need a fast CF Express card if you are recording 4K or higher resolution ProRes 422 footage. With the ProRes RAW format, technically, the fastest CF Express cards can handle the speed for internal recording easily. However, not many cameras support that for some stupid patent reasons. So right now, almost all the mirrorless cameras that support ProRes RAW would require an external recorder to do that. And usually that means the Ninja 5 or 5 Plus. So the downside is pretty obvious. You need to buy one of these recorder and you need to attach it to your camera when you are recording ProRes RAW footage, which can be quite a bit of hassle. But on the positive side, the Ninja 5 or the 5 Plus uses SSD drive to store the video footage, which is usually quite a bit cheaper than the CF Express card of the same capacity. Now, one thing that probably will become more popular in the future is directly attaching an external SSD drive to the camera. This would allow you to record externally to the more affordable SSD drive and not having to buy and attach one of those external recorder. For example, the Panasonic GH6 has a high-speed USB port and the company has already announced SSD direct recording through the USB port that will be coming soon via a firmware update. Okay, now let's have a look and see if there is any difference in terms of image sharpness and details that is captured by different video file formats. So here are three different 5.7K video, all captured by the GH6 using the same settings, one in H.265, one in ProRes 422HQ, and one in ProRes RAW HQ. If we zoom in and check them at 200% zoom, there's virtually no difference at all between all these three different files. And next, let's see if there is any difference in terms of dynamic range. The H.265 and ProRes HQ files are both shot using the Vlog Picture Profile. Other than that, all the comparison video were shot with the same camera settings, and I purposely overexposed them quite a bit because I want to see if there is any difference when I try to recover the overexposed area. And this is the result I got. I don't really see any significant difference between all these three video files after I try to fix the exposure in post-processing. 
This suggests to me that there is no difference or very, very minor difference in terms of dynamic range that can be captured by these different video file formats. However, when I do some more extreme adjustments and try to extract more details from the completely overexposed area, I can see a bit of difference between the ProRes RAW and the non-RAW footage. If you look at the yellow color area on the left, the 12-bit ProRes RAW footage has much smoother transition from the highlight to shadow area, while the 10-bit H.265 and ProRes 42HQ files, there is a bit of bending or posterization effect in the transition area. Editing 4K or higher resolution video always requires a lot of processing power. My computer always struggles when I'm editing my videos, even if my timeline only has a few layers and some simple effects. When I try to play the timeline, my computer just struggles to keep up. Well, I recently upgraded to the new MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip, so it's much better now. But editing performance is really a very important factor for any video editor. And this is one thing the ProRes 422 file are really good at. The ProRes 422 codec was designed to provide good editing performance and the file doesn't need much processing power to decode. What it means is, you will find editing the ProRes 422 file is just a lot easier and less demanding when compared to the H.265 video files. This is something that is very noticeable if you don't have a very fast computer. On the other hand, with the ProRes RAW format, while it's still using the ProRes codec, it does require much more processing power during editing when compared to the ProRes 422 or even the H.265 file. The main reason is, as I mentioned earlier, the ProRes RAW video records the RAW output from the sensor before the debayering process. So when you are editing the ProRes RAW file, the computer has to debayer it on the fly, which requires quite a bit of processing power. But there are also other reasons why editing ProRes RAW could be quite a bit more demanding, and I will talk about that next. Mirrorless cameras these days quite often would heavily rely on lens profile to correct some of the optical imperfection. For example, distortion, vignetting. So when you are recording video, the camera would usually apply some lens profile correction to make the video looks technically correct with minimal distortion and vignetting. But if you are recording in the ProRes RAW format, then all this correction cannot be applied by the camera because you are capturing the raw data from the sensor. So let's have a look at this comparison footage. All shot with the same lens and same settings, you can see the ProRes RAW footage has more obvious distortion than the H.265 and the ProRes 422 file. Another thing the camera would also do is noise reduction. In-camera noise reduction gets much better over the last few years, so that is one of the major reasons why we can get some really clean image even when shooting at 4 digits ISO range. But if you are recording in the ProRes RAW format, then the in-camera noise reduction process would also be skipped. Look at this comparison footage, all shot at ISO 6400, the ProRes RAW file has noticeably more noise than the other two files because those two files already got noise reduction applied. Now, of course, you can do the noise reduction and apply those correction yourself during post-processing, and you could also get better results too because your computer is much more powerful than the processor on your camera and you can apply more complex algorithm and you can do all those adjustments yourself and fine tune it. Look at this result after I apply some noise reduction in post processing. Look how much better it looks now. And this is just processed by me which I'm not really an expert in this area so I'm sure people who know what they are doing will get much better result than me. While in theory, we could also apply noise reduction and other correction to the H.265 and the ProRes 422 file, which already has some baking processing, but the results won't be quite as good. My way to explain that is, imagine you bought an already cooked meal from a restaurant. When you took it home, you think it's not good enough, so you try to adjust the taste a bit by cooking it again. 
you probably won't get the best results compared to if you just cook everything yourself using raw ingredients right from the start. Now, while you can definitely get better results by processing the raw video file yourself, the downside is it will take time to apply the correction yourself and you will also slow down the rendering quite a bit as well. So that's why I said before, editing ProRes raw video is quite demanding, not only because the file itself need more processing power to decode, you will also need to add some more processing on top to correct some of the imperfection yourself. For most of us, when we are recording video, we will want to capture the video using the full width of the sensor. So no cropping would be the best because that means we can use the largest sensor area to provide better image quality, better low light performance. But sometimes having a bit of crop can be very useful as you can get a tighter framing without having to change to a longer focal length lens. That's why a lot of cameras like the GH6 would allow you to choose between recording using the full sensor width by downsampling from the higher resolution output from the sensor or have a pixel to pixel recording output mode which skips any downsampling. However, if you are shooting in ProRes RAW, you won't have this choice. It is because ProRes RAW video is capturing the raw data from the sensor, so the sensor resolution would determine the area of the sensor that is used to record a particular video resolution. So that's why with the GH6 for example, when you're recording in 5.7K ProRes RAW, then there's virtually no crop because it's pretty much the same resolution as the sensor. But if you are recording in Cinema 4K ProRes RAW, then there will be some noticeable crop. So that means if you really want to use the full sensor width, you may have to shoot at the highest resolution and then done sample it during editing. Unfortunately, that means you may be forced to shoot in the higher resolution than needed and that would also increase the file size and also requires more processing power when you are editing the file. Now you may say, hey, there are cameras in the market which do offer no crop even when recording in ProRes RAW at lower resolution than the sensor's native resolution. But that is actually done by landscaping which means there will be some impact to the image quality. So far, I have mentioned quite a few disadvantages if you shoot in ProRes RAW. So you may wonder why would anyone want to shoot in ProRes RAW. But now I'm going to tell you some really powerful thing that you could do if you shoot in ProRes RAW. The first one is the white balance adjustment. Here are three ProRes RAW files that one I shot using the daylight white balance, which is the correct white balance, and the two other files, one I shot in white balance 2500K and the other one is 10,000K. Now I bring all these files to Final Cut Pro, I can set the white balance to 5500K for all these files, and after I change the settings, the files would look exactly the same. With the ProRes 422 or the H.265 file, if I set the white balance really incorrectly when I shoot the footage and I try to fix it in post-processing, the color wouldn't look quite correct. So this is something that I can do easily with the ProRes RAW file. I can easily fix up any incorrection in the white balance settings during the post processing. But there is one more thing that you can do with the ProRes RAW file and that is to adjust the ISO value during editing. So here is a video that I shot at ISO 250 and here is another video that I shot at ISO 1000 but otherwise the camera setting is the same. So the ISO 1001 is a little bit overexposed. But with the ProRes RAW file, I can just go to change the ISO setting and I can change it to ISO 250. And now the video will look almost exactly the same as the video that I shot at ISO 250. So this is definitely a very handy feature. However, unlike the white balance setting which the camera setting is more or less just a metadata and does not actually make any real impact on the recorded video, the ISO setting on the camera 
when you are recording would impact the captured video footage. So if you completely mess up your exposure, for example, you have the ISO value set way too high, then when you try to dial it down during post-processing, you'll probably find the highlight is cryptic, so you can't really recover the blown out highlight area anymore. At least, it seems to be the case when I'm testing the GH6. If you are just getting started and haven't really done much video editing yourself, then this chapter may not really matter to you too much. But if you have been editing video for a while, then you probably would have a preferred video editing software. All the video editing software would support the H.265 video file these days. So if you use H.265, then you wouldn't have problem with this file. With the ProRes 422, while some of the more basic video editing software may not support it, but most of the popular video editing software would support ProRes 422 file, so also you shouldn't really have much problem. And as I've mentioned before, you will probably find editing the ProRes 422 file are less demanding on your computer compared to the H.265 files. Now, ProRes RAW file is a completely different story. Out of the three most popular video editing software, DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Premiere Pro, and Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, which is what I usually use these days to edit my video, just doesn't support ProRes RAW file at all. Adobe Premiere Pro kind of supports it. You can import ProRes RAW video into Premiere Pro and edit it. But right now when I'm recording this video, you still cannot do the white balance and exposure adjustment in the Adobe Premiere Pro yet. They will probably be supported in the near future, but right now Final Cut Pro is the only video editing software out of these three that fully support ProRes RAW editing. Yes, there are a few other software that also supports ProRes RAW editing, but at this stage, ProRes RAW support is still really limited. And unless you are already a Final Cut Pro user, you will most likely have to switch to another video editing software, which can completely change your video editing workflow. Okay, now we have compared the difference of the ProRes RAW, ProRes 422, and H.265 files. So, which one is the best video format? The answer is, there is no best format. Because each format has its own pros and cons, and even for the same user, there are some situations that one format works better than the other, and that's why cameras like the GH6, it provides all the different options so that you can record your files in either H.264, H.265, ProRes 422, and ProRes RAW format, and in many different quality settings as well. So users can just choose the one that is most suitable for the project they are working on. But hey, Richard, you promised that you would help me to choose the most suitable format, right? All right, so here is what I would suggest to you guys. If you are shooting something that you won't need to do any editing, or maybe you just need to do very minor editing, then H.265 will be a great choice as it gives you the smallest file so you don't need a large memory card and you can just send the file or upload the file straight away if you want to and they can play the back no problem. For myself, my YouTube videos are usually shoot in H.265 or H.264 format. I don't really need to do too much editing in terms of color grading. I can take advantage of all those in-camera profile correction and noise reduction, so I don't need to spend time to take care of all this during editing. But if your work usually requires quite a bit of editing, especially you have multi-layer video files on the timeline on top of each other, and your computer is not super powerful, then the ProRes 422 is a better choice as these files are a lot easier to edit even if your computer is a little bit slow. And you can still rely on the camera to take care of all the lens profile correction and noise reduction as well. 
The downside compared to record in the H.265 format is that you will need a lot more space to record and store the video files and you will need a faster card or even external recorder to record in the ProRes 422 format. Now what about ProRes RAW? It's very simple. If you want the best possible image quality, the ProRes RAW is your ultimate format. The ability to adjust white balance during post-processing also gives you a lot more flexibility when you're editing your file. While the ProRes RAW file doesn't seem to offer more dynamic range than the H.265 and the ProRes 422 files, the example that I showed you earlier suggests that the 12-bit RAW file would has less artifact when you are doing some extreme editing compared to the 10-bit H.265 and the ProRes 422 file. If you need to do any green screen work, then the ProRes RAW would also be the best choice for you because it doesn't do any chroma subsampling, so it is better than the ProRes 422 and much better than the 10-bit 420 files. Not having any baking in-camera lens correction or noise reduction means you have more power to do all those during editing to get the best possible results. The downside of shooting ProRes RAW is definitely the big file size and you will very likely need an external recorder. Editing requires more time and a lot more processing power. But if you want the absolute best image quality from your camera, this is what you would choose. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you found this video useful. I'm interested to hear what video format do you normally use and the reason. So drop a comment below and let me know.